Windows Admin Center is a locally deployed browser-based app for managing Windows servers both on-premises and in cloud such as Azure. As well as managing standalone servers, it can integrate with virtualization technologies such as Hyper-V and Azure Stack HCI. Windows Admin Center manages servers by using Remote PowerShell and WMI over WinRM, removing the need to install any management agents on servers. It's designed as a replacement for existing tools such as MMC Snappings and Server Manager. It can be installed onto a server or a workstation, but for this example, I'll be installing Windows Admin Center onto the server so that it can act as a gateway and be used by any computer on the network. To download Windows Admin Center, just go into any browser, search for Windows Admin Center, and then go to the Windows Admin Center overview. On the overview page, there's an option to download Windows Admin Center. This will take you to the Microsoft Evaluation Center but this is the version that's generally available. To download it, just click continue and then enter in some details. And then click yes. So you can click continue and then download. Once the download is completed, go to the downloads folder and run the installation package. Accept the license terms, select required diagnostic data. Tick the box to use uh, Microsoft Update to check for updates. Now, as I'm installing this on the server, it automatically has identified that and will make this a gateway. If you are installing it on a PC, it will just do the standalone version. Leave these as default. Select redirect HTTP port 80 traffic to HTTPS. Once the installation is finished, you can click the URL to load the web app. It'll ask you to enter some credentials. Successfully installed. Once you've logged into the Windows Admin Center, the first thing you want to do is add some servers. So to do that, you go up to the top left and press to add. Then you've got a couple of options. You can add a server, Windows PCs, server clusters, or Azure VMs. For this example, we're just gonna use servers. There are three ways to add a server. You can either enter the name, import a CSV or text file, or search your local Active Directory. For the Active Directory search, you can either type in a server name, or you can use wildcards. So by adding a star or the way I normally do it is just use a star and it will pull back everything select the tick box and then press add free connections added to the connection list to connect to a server you simply just click it on the first time you connect it will ask you to authenticate uh, so you just want to use uh, credentials When you first connect to a server, you'll land on the overview page. This will give you some information about the server, as well as some metrics on the CPU, memory, and network utilization. On the left-hand side, you've got all the extensions which can be used to manage the server. You've got things like the certificate MMC, devices, so you can see which devices are connected to the server, a remote event viewer, so you can see all the event logs, file and file sharing, this lets you see any of the local storage that's attached to the server, as well as any file shares. You've got a firewall viewer, so you can see any incoming and outgoing rules, as well as make amendments. You can see which apps are installed on the server. There's a remote PowerShell terminal.
you can also view any processes which are running on the server as well as end them or start new processes you can view the remote registry and make any changes you can see which roles and features are installed on the server through this you can also make changes so you can tick one and then install the feature or if it's already installed tick it and remove it you can use the windows task scheduler this will show you any task which is scheduled you've also got services you can stop start and restart any services from here as well as go to the advanced settings such as the startup mode you can change the logon types as well as any recovery options there's the storage manager so you can view any disks which are connected to the server as well as any volumes you can configure some advanced settings such as file shares as well as enable or disable remote desktop if remote desktop is enabled you can use the remote desktop extension this allows you to connect to the server via remote desktop through the Windows Admin Center. Not only are there the built in extensions, you can go up to Settings, Extensions, and then see all of the available extensions. Not only are there Microsoft extensions, there are also third party extensions from the likes of Dell, Hewlett Packard, Lenovo, and many more. To install an extension, you can just click it and press install. Once the install is complete, it would automatically refresh the page. To view any installed extensions, you can go to the installed extensions tab and see what's installed. To uninstall any, you can click it and press uninstall. Or if there are any updates available, you can click it and press update. This will automatically update it to the latest version and then refresh the page once it's complete. To use any of the installed extensions, again, you just go to the server and when it does a scan, it will automatically tell you which ones are available to use. I've just installed the Active Directory extension and as this is a domain controller, it can automatically pick that up as well. so you can just go in and use the extension. If you have Hyper-V hosts, you can manage the Hyper-V servers as well. You can view the virtual machines. You can see any existing virtual machines as well as add new ones. You can connect to them over RDP, do the power management or manage any of the servers. You can go to settings and see all of the settings available to manage on the virtual machine. You can do the memory, the processors, any disks that are attached to the machine. You can enable or disable checkpoints on any integration services. You can also see a host summary. This will tell you some information about the virtual machines as well as the CPU and memory usage of the host. As well as managing servers, you can also use the performance monitor this can give this can give you some advanced metrics to see the performance of the server this one can show you how much memory utilization there is over time and that's some of the basics for installing and configuring windows admin center